for the cross.
So believe in his that he's a way maker tonight. So let's go ahead and sing the best song. Yeah. 
Praise God. We have uh, lots of prayer requests tonight. Uh, just a whole list of people for salvation, uh, the full page. And so we want to pray for these for salvation. We want to pray for healing uh, for a number of people. Ellis, Courtney, Amanda, Bryson, Rosie, Jesse, Jessica, Ivan, Earl, Betty, Sydney, Donnie, uh, Malador, family, Antonia, uh, Isaac, Sue, battling addictions, and just for patience, confidence, grace, and uh, the high schools in the, our, our schools in our county, period. Schools in America, amen. And we want to pray for uh, our brother Jason King in particular. Uh, I want to encourage you to really be praying. Help us with that. Lay hold of God on, on his behalf. He's not out of the water with all this yet. Needs miracle power of God. And so uh, tomorrow we're going to open the building at 5. It'll be open all day. And we encourage you. Let's hold prayer for our brother. Uh, you can free up an hour here, an hour there, a couple hours or something. You come sit before the Lord. Uh, when there is a crucial need in the book of Acts, the Bible talks about Peter being incarcerated. Uh, it wasn't just he got arrested. They were going to cut his head off. And so uh, the church just got down and prayed, held a prayer vigil. So you can come during your lunch hour. You can come during the daytime tomorrow. We'll have the building open 5 to 5. And that's just a special time of prayer. Meanwhile, you can keep him in your prayers, too. And uh, just we're believing God for uh, his, his recovery, full recovery, and the blessing of health, and he needs a miracle. So we want to pray for these, for salvation, for I'll, I'll name them, read the list, it's a major list here. We got Brian, and Genevieve, Isaac, Sarah, Landon, Maddie, uh, Sep Green, Pasmore, Jones families, uh, Brazil, Latoya, Betty, Sydney, Dana, Steve, Greg, Malador family, Beard family, Marcus, Diane, Phoenix, Aaron, Ashley, Irelia, Andy, Adrian, and uh, Jessica, Aaron, Anastasia, and Lila. These all need also uh, he, uh, salvation. Amen. Lots of, lots of needs. Amen. Only God can help us with all these needs. Uh, let's pray tonight. Let's just lift our voices before we begin this service as we subside tonight. Uh, Brother Kevin uh, Vargas, come open us up with a word of prayer, if you would. Amen. We come before you, Lord, believing trusting and God we're calling on the mighty name of Jesus that you would move heaven and God move it by healing virtue God deposit that into Jason's life save and heal God. Lord God thank you for bringing us into your house this evening we pray that you just pour out your spirit healing power Lord God be released this night Lord God I pray that you just move your hand in this revivals in these revival services we pray that you have your hand over Jason that he has a complete recovery, Lord God. Have your hand over his life, Lord God. I pray that you just have your hand over um, this um, service, the man of God, this night, Lord God, that the, his words um, are from heaven, Lord God. They touch our hearts, Lord God. Stir us this night. We pray that you just speak to us, Lord God, in due season. We thank you, Lord God, for all you're doing, Lord God, and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, Kevin. Hello. You can greet each other tonight. Just say hello to somebody next to you. Amen.
That's how you stay on fire. Make up your mind. Amen. You're going to do that. Walk with God and, and live and breathe for him every day. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody to church tonight. Really glad you're here. It might be your first, second time or something. Maybe you're just coming to see what's going on. We're so glad you're here. Amen. And we welcome you. We want you to know you can be a part of everything God's doing here. We'd love to have you along. Amen. If you've newly been uh, giving your life to Christ, newly been saved, there's a baptism Sunday morning. Uh, right after our morning service, we'll be baptizing. And then we're also having our fa farewell. Uh, is that a reception or a sending off for the, the Worm family? Amen. Uh, for Austin and Gabe's, their kids, as they go to Pioneer Church up uh, near Raleigh, the Raleigh area, we're believing God for that church and their, their lives in fruitfulness. And so we'll send them away Sunday morning after our service. We'll have some cake. You can uh, be here. We'd love for you to be here for that. When we lay hands on them, they will be gone. Uh, to go do a work for God, and you can support them in that. And then uh, just a couple other quick things. We have revival again tomorrow night, and it's our last evening with our brother Michael Wright. Hadn't it been a good time? God's grace upon us, and, and, and the ministry of our brother is just fine, and we appreciate you and what you're doing. Amen. And we're going to receive a love offering tomorrow night. And so maybe you're live streaming for because of work or out of town or some situation, uh, you be, know this, you can give online and uh, you, you maybe God's stirring your heart, you're occupied tomorrow, you, whatever, but you can give a love offering. Just designate that. This is a love offering. It will go to our brother to bless him and his family and uh, that would be wonderful. Amen. And uh, so this is what's going on. We have a lot of announcements we usually make. I don't like making them all during a revival service. We'll be back tomorrow night. We'll remind you of things happening in the near future, but uh, right now, this is what's going on. And tomorrow, I'm, I'm really asking you to help us pray. Uh, you say, man, I got kids I'm watching. Uh, bring the kids down, sit and pray. Amen. Yeah, I yeah, got work, and well, you can maybe slip out for an hour, your lunchtime or something, come down and pray. Um, very, very important. We want to do that. We want to help uh, the King family. Amen. With Jason, Sabrina, the Pastor, and, and Lee, and just support them in this. And so, um, it's not just support. We are going to rally to believe for God to move. And that's why our prayers, that's why we pray. We believe God hears prayer and we'll answer that prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's, uh, that's pretty much it for announcements I think we need to make tonight. Let's give the Lord our praise as our ushers come. They're going to receive this evening's offering. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. We exalt you. Lord, it's Yadada. Amen. Uh, be, be a generous soul as we give. You know, there's all these ways to give, and I know folks can quickly just go right on their phone and do that. We're asking you to make sure you do that with us. Be, be, a, be a part of it all by giving and being generous before our God. Amen. Let's bow our hearts before the Lord. Our brother Tony uh, Brown's going to ask the Lord's blessing tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. singers, musicians, the sound guys, everybody helping out tonight. Let's welcome Evangelist Wright as he comes to the pulpit. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for being here.
church. Let me just say thank you also to nursery workers. God bless you as you're back there, or some of you, you got the night off. Thank you for, you know, being back there. Listen, nursery to me is like down in Dante's Inferno, like level 12, you know. I, I would, like when I watch my own kids, it's like, guys, go to bed, like take a nap. It's nap time every time I babysit. Naps. Everybody sleep because I don't want to. I don't want to deal with it. Um, so if you put up with kids, other people's kids, thank you, thank you for doing nursery. God bless you, nursery workers. Um, we appreciate you. Um, I want to just do a couple things. I want to ask a question first: Is how many of you here that uh, you have been prayed for or you were given a word sometime by my father Dennis Wright? Just let me see your hand. And sometime in the past, you were given a word or prayed for by him. All right, man. What a life. I like that, man. He was pretty cool. All right, cool. All right. I am excited for what God's going to do tonight. Today in my room, I was almost giddy um, because I'm excited. God's going to do some great things, but I need to set the stage here. So remember how Sunday night I, I said, I'm going to take a long time in the sermon and, and we'll make it up in the altar call. We'll do short altar call. Tonight, what I need you to do is I need to reverse that. I'm going to preach very short, but I need you to give me time in the altar call. All right? You all right with that? So when I'm done after 12 minutes, I, I got some stuff to do still. We get, we're gonna, you're not getting out early. This is what I'm saying. Don't get too excited. Tonight, there are people here that you've come into service and you are here on your last leg. I felt in the prayer room that there are people you've come into church tonight. And most people have no idea what you're going through. In fact, there are some of you, there is not a soul in the world who knows how very bad it is. If, if they saw, if people that knew you saw what's in your mind right now. And what you're going through, they would, be, they would be shocked at how bad it is. You're here in this service. You came to church tonight, and you are at the very end. You're not just struggling. It's not a bad day. You are at the end. And you came to the right service. Because at the end of this service, I'm going to pray for you. And God's going to set you free. God's going to help you tonight. So there are a few of you that came in that condition. And... Uh, Man, it's going to be a good night for you. You're going to leave different. And so let's get to the word of God. Genesis chapter 22, if you turn in your Bibles there. I want to put up a picture here and see if you know this, man. Do you know who that is? Maybe you'll know the other picture, who he is. Do you know who that is? That is Michael Jordan. He is in the argument as having one of the most recognizable faces in the world. If you go through a list of most recognizable faces, he's typically always in the top five in the entire world. Number one is always Jesus Christ, which is funny because we don't actually know what he looks like. <laughs> but he's, Jesus Christ has the most, rec you show anybody in the world and most people in the entire world know what that face is. Uh, other pictures are... Um, Adolf Hitler, Princess Diana, which shows you the impact of the British Empire. Michael Jordan is in that argument of having one of the most recognizable faces in the world. He is considered to be the greatest basketball player ever. Now, I got to just stop right there because oftentimes there's children that want to say it's LeBron James. And so we just want to give you a moment to be your childish self so we can identify you as the child you are. I mean, I'm sorry. It's, uh, you know, you just don't know any better. You're cute, but you just don't know. All right, back to it. 
The reason Michael Jordan is such a recognizable face is because of the things he did when no one was watching. That after the books were written and interviews were done and they searched out all of his history, is what they found out about Michael Jordan is that when no one was doing the work, he was doing the work. When no one was watching, he was shooting free throws. He had these stories, you know, he'd make, he'd have to make 500 free throws before he'd leave the court. He was all in this constant competitive mode. And the reason he is so famous, his face is so recognizable, is because of the things he did when no one saw him. Now think about that idea because there's a theme in that illustration that many of our greatest sacrifices are going to be private. No one's going to know the things that you have to do when no one's watching. They're not going to see it. But it is through those actions that God is going to be able to raise you, raise you up. And our scripture that we're going to read tonight in Genesis 22, it is probably the most famous moment of Abraham's life. It's the moment even sinners know. It's the sacrifice or the potential sacrifice of his son Isaac. But what I want you to catch about this moment is that no one knew what happened not even the young men who were traveling with them. Only Abraham and Isaac know what happened that day. It was a private sacrifice. It was a private moment. And this is the challenge for you and I. Are you willing to make the unseen sacrifices? I want to preach that idea. A sermon called Unseen Sacrifices. We're beginning in Genesis chapter 22 and verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with a donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and he laid it on his son Isaac, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. And then if you know the story, they go through this ordeal. They climb the mountain. He lays Isaac on the altar, goes to sacrifice him. There's a ram there. God supplies him. I'm going to ask you to move down to verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there were behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its thorn, by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place the Lord will provide, as it is to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you, and multiply, and I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand on the, uh, which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies, and your seed, all the nations of the earth, shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Then verse 19, so then Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt in Beersheba. Unseen sacrifices. Let's begin, let's talk about the de desire for recognition. Because most people, if you have a proper working social structure, you want recognized for your work. Workers want paid. People that achieve great things, they want some recognition for that. They, we, we want to be recognized by award, by trophy, by ceremony. And our great fear many times is that some good deed or some good work, some great effort is going to go unnoticed. Here's the problem, though, is that many of the decisions that you have to make for good are going to be hidden decisions. See, in our text, the young men, the servants that are with Abraham, not even they know what's just happened. No one has seen this sacrifice. Verse 5, Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go. Then verse 19, so Abraham returned to his young men. They arose and went together to Beersheba. Isaac and Abraham have just gone through this life-changing struggle, this experience, this sacrifice, this faith, and no one saw it. And this is the principle. Most consecrations happen in private. And because these decisions are not seen... For many people, hidden decisions are very hard to make. 
And the result will be many people simply don't make the difficult decisions and they come to live in such a way that unless someone's watching them, unless there's an eye on them, unless there's, unless there's an oversight, they don't make good choices. So let's talk secondly about hidden decisions. Because there are three things that our text shows us that making hidden decisions will do. Number one is hidden decisions will build your character. There are no shortcuts to strength. I know you get those emails about like the miracle drug. Uh, you get the, you know, you see those ads about the ab workout where you sit in your chair all day and it pulses your abs and the guy standing there, uh, you know, like it doesn't work. There's no shortcut to strength. It takes repetition. It takes time. It takes effort. Second Peter 1 verse 5, also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness. I've just read to you two verses, but in those two verses, there are decades of decisions to make. To build faith, to build virtue, godliness, self-control, perseverance, that takes a life of decisions. That doesn't happen quickly. And what God is looking for is faithfulness from your hidden life because hidden decisions build character. Number two is hidden decisions reveal God to you. It's in these private moments that you will see God's nature and God's character. See, in our text, there's a different characteristic of God that's revealed to Abraham. The Lord will provide, or we would call that Jehovah Jireh, another name for God. That is revealed in verse 14 uh, in a moment where Abraham is making sacrifices. Hidden choices. And in those private moments, listen, I'm telling you, I know we could have some testimonies here tonight. If some of you, it was in private moments well, you learn characters of God that you didn't know before. You learned his nature. He was close to you. You saw God differently in some hidden places. You see God's promises. They're revealed to you in these moments. Genesis 22, verse 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together what? What Abraham is speaking here, and we find out later that even in this hidden moment, Abraham is confident in God's promise. My son, God will provide. We read later on in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17, that by faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Because he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, verse 19, concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. That in this private moment, here is Abraham, and he's worked out faith now. He's the father of faith by now. And he's taking his son, Isaac, and Isaac's asking about, you know, Pops, what's going on here? And, and he's, Abraham is confident. I know God's promises. That God can even raise you up from the dead. I am sure of what God can do. That revelation comes in the hidden place. You don't get that from being on stage performing. Or when everybody's watching you on Lead the Outreach, you get that in the hidden places. There's a third thing that we see hidden decisions do, and that is hidden decisions bring fruitfulness. I'll make a statement to you right here. Without these moments of unseen sacrifices, you cannot have fruitfulness. The angel shows up and, and speaks this promise to Abraham. Uh, verse 16, because you did this, the sacrifice, verse 17, uh, blessing I will bless and multiply and I'll multiply. That these are connected. Because you were willing to make that sacrifice, um, I am now willing to bless and multiply you. Uh, hidden decisions are the pathway to fruitfulness. It's not enough you know some things. You're going to have to work that out in private places. I pastored for years and, and you know, in the States and all that. And, and praise God, I had some good experiences. 
But I'm going to tell you something. Overseas, when I was on this dot of an island where there was no one there from our fellowship, there's only two people in that church that have ever seen another fellowship church. And the reality of, are you still going to go to morning prayer when no one's watching? Are you still going to read your Bible? Am I still going to write fresh sermons? Am I still going to work my ministry? Am I still going to give myself, even though no one is around? Pastor Greg was not texting me. Did you pray today? It's me. It's private. No one knows. But it was in that place, thank God for my time I pastored in the States, but it was in that place where I learned how to be a man of God, where it became real in me. It's in that place I worked out fruitfulness. I had a man who came and, uh, in our church there in, in, uh, in the island, and when I took the church, this man was off island, but he, everyone knew him. He was an interpreter. And so he was kind of forced on me as an interpreter. I didn't know him. After a few months, he came back. And, and when he got back, I was like, this guy's funky. Like, there's something off about him. And, uh, but it was, you know, the situation. I was kind of forced to have him. So he interprets on a Sunday night for me the first time. And he tells me after the service, he goes, yeah, when you were preaching tonight, it wasn't really making sense to people. So I told them what I thought they needed to hear. And I was like, you are funky. <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, and so I'm trying to work out how this guy's got a lot of influence. He's an older man in this culture. They all respect him. It's, it's, it's a difficult one. So what I had is I had an interpretation system that I could do that was in ear. So he could sit in the back, you know, I could kind of limit his access to people and just those who wanted the earpiece in and trying to, trying to move him out of the way. And so I installed this system and I go to him and I say, look, we're going to just uh, have interpretation from the back, you know, and then you just be in here. And uh, this is what he said to me. If I'm not on stage, I'm not interpreting. Now he thought I was going to do what I'm supposed to do in their culture. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm so disrespect you. Uh, please, please, you be on stage. That is not my culture. <laughs> he said, unless I'm on stage, I'm not interpreting. And I thought, praise God, you're not interpreting. <laughs> Problem solved. And he never interpreted again. Come to find out he was off island when I got there because he was with his second family. He was an immoral man. <laughs> he was funky. But see, for some people... The unseen place is the great limiter, the limiter of their life. They never want to go to that place where just no one knows, but I'm still going to have to make a sacrifice. So let's talk thirdly then about the recognition of God. Because here is our hope, is when you make unseen sacrifices, God is the one who sees everything you do. And in our story on that day, no one knows what happened. Not even the young men with them. As far as they know, Abraham and Isaac left, worshiped God, however they do, and came back. On this day, no one knows, but what we know now is that it was seen and recorded by God. Hebrews eleven seven by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had, the, had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. That God saw and now God records and puts it in this hall of faith and raises Abraham's decision up. That though no one saw it on that day, we're talking about it to this day. It's the most famous moment in Abraham's life. But no one saw it except God and that was enough. Matthew 6 verse 3, when you do, it a, chari when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing that your charitable deed may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. When you go, you pray, go to your room. When you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. God sees the unseen sacrifice. If we're going to be able to make these decisions, what it's going to take is you're going to have to keep your eyes on the future. That what are these decisions going to produce in my life? 
On that day, Abraham sets in motion nations, the redemption for the world, even the very image of God offering his son, Jesus Christ. He puts into motion, simply by making hidden decisions, life and world-shaking moments. You have no idea what you're releasing when you make those decisions. When you get up when no one knows and you pray. When you read your Bible, when you're disciplining, when you're telling people about Jesus, and it's not an outreach, it's just personal. When you're facing temptation and you say, you know what, no one would know, but God knows. I'm not doing it. When you're going through trials and everything is screaming out inside, just give it up. Just quit. Who cares? You can repent later. And you make a decision, no, I'm making the sacrifice. You put into motion things that your imagination cannot capture. And many of our greatest sacrifices are going to be private. No one's going to see you but God. And that's going to be enough. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me tonight. For the next few moments as we're pausing in the presence of God. If you came to church tonight and you need a miracle in your life, I'm going to tell you something very clearly. The first miracle you need is salvation. You might look at your life and think, I've got all these problems. I've got money problems. I've got family problems. My relationships are breaking. I've got problems and addictions. and I'm, My mind is tormented and all these things. And you start to point out, well, you know what the problem is? It's my upbringing. Yeah, the problem is these people I've been around. The problem is culture. Lack of money. And I'm going to be honest with you tonight. The problems in your life don't come from any of those things. The problems in your life come from sin. Sin is the root of this. The spiritual curse of sin is on every human from the day they're born. The Bible says when sin is full grown... It brings forth death. What that means for you is if you continue in this life of sin, you die in your sin, you're going to face judgment from God for eternity in hell. That's what sin does. That's the nature of sin. It is destruction. But God doesn't want you to go to hell. The Bible says he's not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. That's why he offered his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ took on the punishment for our sin. That's why it wasn't enough for Jesus just to die. It's not like he just stopped breathing one day and, well, he died. He was punished. He was beaten. He was nailed to a tree. He was crucified. What that's all about is it was Jesus taking on the punishment of sin. What God does now today for us is he gives us the opportunity to repent to ask that the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ, that blood would cleanse us from our sin. You don't need another book. You don't need a better program. What you need is the blood of Jesus to cleanse your soul from sin. And God can do that tonight. God can do a miracle for you. If you're here in this place, by lifting your hand, you're saying, yes, I want to pray. If that's you, I want you to do that right now. Yes, that's me. Lift up your hand right now. You say, I want to pray. I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm tired of living this way. I need a change, and I need Jesus to do that tonight. Lift up your hand. Yes, that's me. Quickly, quickly do it now so I can pray for you. We're going to have someone lead you in a prayer, but that's you. Just lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. God bless you, sir. Thank you for your hand. Thanks for being honest. How many others? You'd be honest with God tonight. That's what God's looking for. He's not looking for you to do a bunch of religious things, and you've got to go through these steps. And What he wants is some honesty. To humble yourself and say, God, it's, it's my sin. That's the problem. I need to repent. Would you do that tonight? Lift up your hand. By lifting your hand, you're saying, that's what I want to do. I want to repent and pray tonight. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Appreciate you, brother. Maybe you're a backslider here. You were right with God in the past, but you've gone back into sin. 
That is a painful life. That is, that is a painful life. The reason you're here is because God loves you. And all the excuses that the devil would put, no, you're here because this, and they forced you. And you, No, you're here because God's a merciful God. And he wants to redeem you. He wants to draw you again. Backslider, lift up your hand. God bless you, sir. Thank you for your hand. How many others? You're backslidden. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for your hand. How many others? Get right with God tonight. Don't keep living the way you're living. It's not going to be worth it. Be honest. It's not going like you wanted. You need God to forgive you. Backslider, lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Unsaved. Not right with God. You're backslidden. One more call here. Join these honest hearts. Praise God. I want to speak to the church for just a moment. I'm challenging you to commit yourself to the hidden and secret disciplines of a godly life. Decisions you're going to have to make that no one knows. You know what they are. You know what they are. This altar will be a place where you commit yourself to some things. Just before we stand, if you lifted your hand for salvation, would you look at me? Look at me? Look at me here? You meant it? You meant it? You mean that? Just nod your head. You meant that? You meant it here. I want you to come out of your seat. Come out of your seat. Yeah, come out of your seat. Come meet me at the altar. This man in the back here over here. You come as well. Come out of your seat. I want you to come to this altar. A man's going to come. Come meet them at the altar. Appreciate your honesty. Man, I appreciate you, brother. My name is Micah. It's nice to meet you. This man behind you is going to lead you in a prayer. If you just kneel down here. This man, sir, appreciate you down there. Going to have someone pray with you, okay? This man's coming right behind you. He's going to lead you in a prayer, okay? God bless you. Appreciate your honesty. You can stay right there. It's fine. The rest of us, why don't we stand and find a place to pray at the altar? Come out of your seat. We're going to sing a song of worship. Um, let's give God a, uh, some time. Speak to him about what your life um, needs to change. Let's worship God for a moment. Let's give him praise and worship. We honor you, my father. I give you praise. King of kings, there's none like you, oh God. Praise his and glory to your name.
God is good. Can you say amen? Amen. I just want to do a quick, uh, real quick, if there's anyone here, you've had a testimony of healing that you haven't told me yet this week or you had to do a test. We prayed for some things last night, the night before, the morning. And uh, is there anyone here, you have a testimony, you haven't told it yet, or, or uh, you just you had to test yourself and you found some good results. You can demonstrate, you had some demonstration of that. Anyone at all? You've had a change? You want to give that testimony just before we do some other things. You haven't already told us. Okay. I want to pray then. Um, I want to ask you to return to your seats, and I want to pray for a few things here. Now listen. I want to pray first for people, and I'm aiming at men here. I want men from this church, men from this local church, who you want to be used in the gifts. You want to be used in speaking in tongues and interpretation. You want to be used in working in miracles, signs and wonders, and praying for the sick and see them, seeing them healed, uh, works of faith. You, you want to be used in that dimension. Now, you're a man or a male from this church. I, I don't care if you're a man age yet. You can be a young man. And you want God to use you in that gift ministry. I want you to come to the altar here, but before you do... I want you to take this seriously. I want you to contemplate what I'm about to ask you. If you want to be used in the gifts, and you're actually willing to step out and do something, I want you to come. All right, now you come. Any male from this church, you want to be used in the gifts, come fill the altar here. Now, I'm referring to the gifts as the nine gifts, you know, 1 Corinthians 12, these nine gifts. And those nine gifts, those ministries, that, that's not male or female. That can be anybody. My reference points are Prescott. In Prescott, there's ladies, they speak out in tongues. They, they give an interpretation as well at times. They, of course, women can lay hands on the sick. Uh, my wife, she doesn't, she, if I'm with her, she's like, Babe, pray for them. I'm like, you pray for them, man. You pray to the same God. She prayed for a lady on a plane, and we're sitting next to her. She got healed sitting right there on the plane. So uh, in these nine gifts, God can use women as well. And so if you're a lady here, and you want God to use you in that dimension as well, I want you to come. I want you to stand behind these men. Men, will you just take a step forward? You're a woman. You want to be used in that capacity. You'd say, you know what? I want God to use my life in that as well. And, and you, you'd come stand behind them. Now, as these are coming, I'm going to give you a couple. Again, I asked for some time here, so just let me, let me make some things clear. By coming to the altar for this, I am not giving you a gift. There's no mantle being passed, none of that. I'm praying that God will give you boldness to step out. That's what I'm praying for. The Holy Ghost will deposit into you something of a courage that you haven't had before, that you will step out and do some things for God. You'll pray for the sick when you see them. You'll give somebody a word. But I want to give you some guidelines here uh, so we don't end up pastor having to correct a bunch of things. All right. Number one is if you're going to step out in tongues and interpretation, uh, you start that, you exercise that in your local church. This church. This is your church. This is where you step out and begin to... Don't let your first tongue and interpretation be at conference. All right? That's not, you've got to develop that. And the reason is, there's a couple reasons. Number one is these people know you. And if you're funky, they can call you on it. But if you're at conference, everybody's like, well, that was funky, but we don't really know him, so okay. 
this is where it's developed. This is where you exercise that. You gain some credibility in your local church by stepping out here first. And not only can they check you, but they are gracious. Is, you know, Pastor, people have this image of Pastor Greg because they've been to conference and they've heard him shut people down. Yield, you know, like, yeah. and the whole job. Listen, I'm going to tell you something about Pastor Greg. I have only ever seen him do that at conference outside of one time. He did it in church. And the one time he did it in church that I remember was this psycho, this lady who had been, a, she, he, had, he ended up kicking her out of church because she was mad. She, was, she actually went to jail for some things. That's the only time I've ever seen him do that. But people that are just trying to step out, like young people or people that are just trying to develop that, or he, he has never shut those people down. Because we're gracious, we want you to develop, but this gifts are messy business. You know, it's humans trying to operate in the supernatural dimension. So, so these people will be gracious. You know, sometimes you'll be like, let's say it, Lord Jesus, amen, hallelujah, praise God. And everybody's like, all right, at least he tried, you know. These people will be gracious with you. Number two is... If you're going to practice word of knowledge, giving people words or calling out specific things, you practice that on outreach. Your first word is not going to be, thus saith the Lord, he told you to marry me. <laughs> nope. Ladies, if a guy tells you that, run. Go tell your pastor. I know some of you, I know, I know the story. Yeah, there's a couple of you. And it happened, and, you know, God help you. Um, but listen, here's what I mean by practice on outreach. If you're witnessing to somebody, you don't know them, and you just get this impression across your mind that I think they might have back pain, then just ask them, do you have back pain? And if they say no, then you go, okay, that, that wasn't God, no problem. You're developing the sensitivity. But if they say, yeah, actually, I just heard it last week been hurting for a month whatever then you're going okay all right that's what God's voice sounds like I'm developing this no one dies no one's life is changed if you're wrong you're just developing this sensitivity uh, in the word of knowledge and so practice on outreach and non-life changing ways just ask questions nobody cares develop that and then number three is prophetic tongues, prophecy, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, they're always encouragement. Always. That's the parameters of the Bible. The nine gifts are always for edification, exhortation, and encouragement. If you're a prophet, which is a different, that's a different thing, that's the five leadership gifts, that's different. If you're a prophet, that, then you can speak some judgment. But the gifts are always encouragement. Always. You never to go to someone in church and go, hey, you know, thus says the Lord. You better straighten it up. Or, you know, a young guy, God says to you, church, get on outreach with us. We're out here working and you're not. That's not God. That's that's you. That's your flesh. So I'm giving you some I'm giving you some guidelines. If you're going to be using the gifts, work within these parameters. And now once we pray, listen, just find somebody to pray for. Find a sick person, lay hands on them and pray. See what God does. Just step out. Step out and develop something. God can help you. I want to pray for you. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to say, Father in heaven, I make myself available for gift ministry. I want to be used to bless others with my life. And I'm asking you to put in my spirit a boldness and a courage to step out and see you use my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's thank God and begin to worship Him. Oh God, I pray, fill them with the Holy Ghost. God, fill them with a boldness to step out, to pray for this, to give them opportunity, even tonight. Give them chances to exercise faith. Riarabando robo si caramando arrivo shanda. Oh, Heavenly Father, pour out your spirit upon us. Let us see your work be done. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, now it's on. See what happens.
All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask uh, all of the men here that you came up, you're 18 or over. I want you to stay up here. Just step up here. The rest of you, you can be seated. Just, just step up, face me. 18 or over from this church, not pastoral staff. So if you came up, I want you to, I want you to believe God. Okay, just step up here. Step up. Step up a step. I want to pray for some specific things. I want to pray for people here tonight um, that you have eye conditions, you have a vision problem or an eye disease. Um, uh, I want you to come. I want to pray for you. I want you to just come in right now. I want, you to, I want to pray for you. Uh, you have an eye condition. Either you're losing vision or you have recurring infections. And if you, it's a vision thing, I want you to bring something you can read with you so that you can do a test. If, or if it's farsightedness and, you know, nearsighted, just bring something that you can do a test with your eyes. Um, I want, uh, then anyone here, you have problems in your ears, whether it's hearing, you have ear infections, maybe you have a child that has recurring ear infections, I want you to come up. I want you to come up and just stand behind these men. Guys, will you just make a, a, a straight line? Just come in. If you're not here for prayer for, for that, uh, just so they can stand behind you clearly. Just make a straight line there. And then um, I want to pray for anyone. You have uh, skin conditions or rashes. Uh, eczema, hives, um, anything like that, that you need God to, to touch your life. Or if you have a child that has this, uh, just bring that child up. Spread out, spread out over there. All right, how many of you here, you would know if God healed you right now? Like you could tell the difference. You could tell the difference. All right. What I want you front line of men to do, I want you to turn around. And you're going to pray for them. So whoever's in front of you, um, you're going to have to spread out here a little bit. You're going to pray for these people. Now, I'm going to help you to pray, but you said you want to be used. So now here we go. Let's be used. So if it's a female, you're not related to her or anything, you, you know, just kind of take her hand gently and be nice. A man in front of you, just, so I want all of you, I want you to line up. Take a minute here. Take a minute. Our sister's playing. I want you to take a minute. Each one of you, you're going to pray for somebody. And so get lined up. If there's more than enough, you know, two of you on, a, on a, some people, come here. Come here, guys. These guys are going to pray for you. Yep, that's right. Charles Spurgeon, you're going to pray. They just told me Charles Spurgeon. All right, everybody here, you need, yeah, come on, guys, get closer, get closer. You're going to have to like each other. All right, so you pray. I want you, each one of you praying for one of them. Okay. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to help you to pray. Okay, men, listen to me. I'm going to help you to pray. We know what they're up here for. I'm going to help you. I want you to take their hand or, you know, lay a hand on them. And I want you to believe God. Men that are praying, I want you to say, God, right now, I speak a miracle. I bind false religion. I bind witchcraft. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. Sickness and disease must go. I command life. Resurrection power. This body will function as God intended. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's begin to thank God and worship Him. Loose them right now. I command eyes to be open. I command ears to be open. I break the curse of disease, infection, and sickness. I command skin conditions to vanish immediately. God, exalt yourself in Jesus' name. Okay. All right, man, I want you to take a step back. And those you were prayed for, just do a quick test. Uh, if you couldn't look, uh, read something. I want you to read something. Take it out. Read something. Get a Bible. Uh, if you couldn't hear, plug up your good ear and uh, just do a test. Have somebody. If you had a skin condition, uh, check that skin condition if you're able to. And uh, right now, just do a test. I want you moving, testing, doing things. Tell me, is there anyone you, you can tell a difference yet? Uh, sometimes I've had some skin conditions where they looked and it was within a few seconds there was a change starting. Within a few days it was completely gone. So if that's changing, just do a check. Do a check. How many right now? There's a difference. You can tell there's a difference already. What's the difference? A rash was behind your ear. How long had that been there? 
a few months and you came tonight, you had it. And it's gone now. Praise God for that. Thank God, church. Praise God. He prayed for you? Who prayed for you? Oh, all right, Charles. Uh, it's Russ, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? There's a change yet. Okay, now, gentlemen, this is where, this is where then we step into, we're fighting. And so what I want to pray for you is, folks, um, I want to ask, is there anyone here that when you, uh, as you are prayed for, you would be able to tell a difference if that's you? I just want you to hold your hand up and hold it there. You'd be able to tell the difference because we need to know, if, you know, if you'd be able to tell, okay? You'd be able to tell. All right, so some of you, not, not, not a lot of you. I want you to pray, and, and men, I want you to listen to what I do here. If that's you, you could tell a difference. I want you to lay your hand on your body where you need a miracle. And if it's a lot of things, just put your hand on your head. And I want you to pray with me. These that you could tell a difference, I want you to say, I command. Say it out loud. I command resurrection life. I forgive all those who have hurt me. I close the door to my past. I bind false religion. I bind witchcraft and words spoken against my life. I command a miracle by the authority of Jesus Christ. Loose them right now in Jesus' name. I command healing. Eyes will be opened. Ears will be opened. Skin will be restored in Jesus' name. Let's worship God. I want you to test. Do a test. Okay, do a quick test. Anyone that you could tell the difference, you can now. Is there a change at all? Anyone at all? What's that? Your eyes have. <laughs> Praise God, Pastor. Yes, sir. She can see better. What was the problem before? Oh, she has glasses, yeah. And, uh, and how long has she had glasses for? Two years. And you can see better? Praise God. That's great. Let's thank God. What's your name? Natalia? I'm Micah. Remember me. All right. Great. Anyone else? You can tell the difference yet. There's just some of you, and we'll have to be able to tell. We'll have, you have to let us know. Is there a change? Something different? What's different? Yeah? Your hearing's off and on because of the TBI. Okay. You can hear. Right now it's open. And it's going to stay open because God's touched you. Praise God. He prayed for you, huh? All right, man. That's great. Great news. Anyone else? You want to give us a testimony? Down here. Yeah, what happened? Is this young man here? Yeah, what did, what did they pray for? Your ear and what was wrong with your ear? Ringing, okay. And, and uh, what, what now? Is it different? What's wrong? What's different? It's not ringing. It's not ringing. <laughs> That's great. Praise God for that. What's your name? Ellison. Ellison? Who prayed for you? Which one of these? This guy lay hands on you? You did? All right. Good work. What's your name? Lorenzo. Lorenzo. All right, Lorenzo, good job, man. Praise God. Anyone else? Yeah? What's, what's different? What's changed? You had what? You can see better. And so what was the problem before? Okay. We're, we're, we're reading glasses. And did you read something? What? On your phone, you read it, and it's different. Praise God. Isn't that great? Thank God. Okay, listen, gentlemen and, and ladies, I never laid hands on anybody. It wasn't, I, I just helped you to pray. Turn around, guys, look at me. Pastor Mitchell said over and over, anything you see me do, you can do. I just believe Pastor Mitchell and I believe the Bible. And I just, step, just pray for people. It's, you will, God will build his church on miracles. 
Just take a step. Who knows what God will use your life for? The reason I do this is because the first time I prayed for somebody and saw a miracle was in a setting like this. I was a disciple. I prayed for a lady. Back pain. She took that brace off and went cheering down the aisle. It changed my life. I was like hooked. All right. Praise God. All right. You can be seated here for a moment. Man, I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for what God's going to do. Let me just ask, is there anyone here, you're a visitor, you came to church tonight because you heard we were praying for people and uh, maybe you didn't come up for prayer, you've been at your seat, but you need prayer for some area of your life. Is that anyone? You're visiting tonight, first time here, or maybe a second time here. Anyone at all? Okay. All right. Beard? That's all I knew, you know? I saw you grabbing your kid. I figured you were about to go. I thought, no, I got to catch him. You're, what was it, Mike? Tom, Thomas. Hey, buddy. Okay, Thomas, here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, you may or may not be familiar with guns. I'm assuming you probably are. Uh, a gun is useless until the trigger's being pulled. It's just a conglomeration of metal and parts until the trigger's being pulled. And what you need to do is you need to start pulling the trigger again. And in your life, you need again. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do some things again. And you need to start and forget misfires. Forget, forget missed targets, forget it, who cares? Just keep pulling the trigger. You came up tonight to be used, right? You came up, you answered that. Yeah, pull the trigger. Do, do things that it's been a while since you've done. And step out, um, forget the things that have happened because God wants to do some things in the future. I'm gonna pray for you. Give me your hand, Thomas. Lord, I pray for this man and his family. I pray you would be real in his life. Make yourself real. Use him for glorious things in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for letting me pray for you, bud. All right. Thank God, church. Thank God for that. Let's praise God. <laughs> Last thing I want to do here tonight is I want to pray for people that um, I mentioned in the beginning. I want to pray for people you're under mind battles. And there's, you're going through some mind battles, some things that are, it's just deep. And um, you really need God to help you. You really need God to do a miracle. It's, it, I'm not going to ask you any of the details. Um, this young man here, what's your name? What's your name, yeah. What is it? Earl. Earl? I'm Micah. Nice to meet you. You know Russ here? New or new, no, uh, just met or known him for a while? work with them. Earl, it's nice to meet you tonight. So you came to the altar, you prayed. What God wants me to tell you is that there's, there's a, a series of things that uh, have happened in the lead up to tonight. And most of those things you have not seen because it's been God behind your life making some, some very coincidental things happen and you you haven't seen a lot of it there might be a few things where you're like that was that yeah okay I can see how I came here tonight but most of it's been unseen God's been working behind but what is going to happen is you're going to start to see some things in the future in the in coming God's going to start to show you all the things he's doing in your life and I want to encourage you that you need to begin to write down you need to begin to it, make a mental note or write it down I would suggest writing it down is all the things where you go, you know what, that's God. God's at work in my life. And write that down and begin to write some things down because you're going to see the hand of God at work in your life. There's some things you need. There's some things you're needing right now. It's like, God, I need you to work this out. This is an issue. I need. And God's going to do it for you. But you need to write it down and give him the glory and you need to become a testimony of all the things he's doing for you because God's going to help you. He's going to do some good things. Okay, give me your hand, Earl. Help him, God. I'm praying right now that you will speak your word to him, that you will change the circumstances in his future.
for the favor that you have upon his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for letting me pray for you. Yeah, appreciate you. All right, I want to pray now for people that you have these, uh, these mind battles. You've been tormented. I, stepped, I did that, didn't I? Sorry. You've been tormented. I want you to just right where you are. I want you to, um, no, I want you to come. I want you to come. Let's all stand together. You've been going through mind battles. I'm not going to ask you any questions. But there's a few of you here. I want you to come out of your seat. I'm going to pray for you. Just come up. Come up. Just make a line here. You've been going through stuff. Your mind. It's, as I mentioned, it's been things that are tormenting. I mentioned earlier, is some strong, strong stuff. Just take a step back here. I want to believe God for you. Church, I want you to stretch your hands out. I want to pray for these. I want to ask uh, Pastor Sispansky, if you can come, uh, pass, uh, just the pastors here, if you can help me lay hands on these people and help me to pray for them. We're going to believe God to do a miracle. Break strongholds here. Uh, Pastor, if you start over there, I'm going to start down here. Amen. Let's pray right now. Church, help me to pray. God, I'm asking uh, for a miracle in these minds. Break off um, the chains of of mind battles that have been tormenting them. God, you have to do a miracle. I command healing virtue. God, in mind, set people free. Set them free. There are mind battles and things they're going through. There's a deep darkness. Oh, God, loose them in Jesus' name. Loose her. I command healing. God, touch her. Bring a fresh redemption, a spirit of God. Holy Ghost, minister life. Break the curse of the things that have happened. Oh, God, I want you to begin to pray. Say, God, touch my mind. Do a miracle in me. In Jesus' name, loose her. God, touch her life. Touch her. Make yourself real. Set her free from mind battles, tormenting things of this world. God, set them free. I'm asking for your touch. Thank you for the work of your hand. Let's worship God. God, set her free right now. Here, what's your name? What is it? Zaya, take my hand. I want you to say, Jesus, I invite you to touch my mind and do a miracle. I need you to make yourself real in my life. Loose her right now. Oh, God. God, you see it. You see what she's going through. You have to break the chains. God's going to help you, dear. You're one of these ones. You're one of these ones that I was speaking about in the, in the, in before I preached. Is, is God spoke to me. There's going to be some people here that if people knew, it would be, they'd be shocked. Because you're covering some things well. You're doing a good job of, you're trying to survive. You're trying to make it. But what you need is, you, have, you need nothing the world has to offer. You need only what God has. And you came here tonight on a last leg. And, and it's a good thing you did. It's a good thing you made it. Look at me. It's going to be different now. It's going to be different from now on. Tonight, it changes. God's going to set you free. God, right now, loose her from every tormenting spirit. I break the curse of rejection and harm and abuse. Things that have happened, break the curse in Jesus' name. Amen. It's an honor to pray for you. God's got good things for you. Okay? God bless you, dear. Amen. Pastor, as he's getting ready to come up, I want to encourage you in um, uh, tomorrow, we're going to be, I'm going to pray for people that you have uh, organ problems, or you have an upcoming surgery. And so I want to believe God, if that's you or you know someone who's got a surgery coming up, uh, uh, you'd bring them tomorrow. We're going to believe God for good things. Amen? What a night. Let's thank God and let's praise Him as we go. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go with God's blessing. Let's remember, please. Uh, if you can free up tomorrow at all, um, even in the, you know, whether it's in the morning after work and during the day to come and pray for our brother, Jason King, let's believe God for an absolute complete miracle. Amen. And, and pray for that and let's contend for that. And then I also want to encourage you, Hey, take, you know what? He, we prayed for God to use us. 
supernatural giftings. God does that, but we have to step out. And so take the first opportunity to be the best policy. The first opportunity you get, you see somebody limping tonight, just go for it. Pray for them. Amen. And just like he was talking, you know, uh, evangelism, if you feel, you know, God, I'm asking for a word of knowledge. Let's let's step out. Step out. Amen. God's going to help us. Amen. I'm believing God for great uh, testimonies and wonderful things. Amen. Let's go with God's blessing. I want to ask if our brother Jimmy Potingos would close us in prayer.